welcome to our um, Conroe ISD School Safety and Security Committee meeting. We appreciate you uh, joining us today. We'll call our meeting to order here at three o'clock. Um, before we get started, I want to make a, a special welcome to our new uh, newest member of the committee uh, by statute. Our board president is one of our members of our committee. And um, as you may or may not have heard, we have a new board president now, Mr. Skeeter Hubert. So welcome, Mr. Hubert, to your first uh, safety and security meeting. Thank you, Dr. Knoll. It's a pleasure to be with you guys and looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say. All right, thank you, sir. All right, our first, um, let me, uh, I can, I'm gonna go ahead and just share my screen. I've got the agenda. I know that you've all uh, seen the agenda, but we'll put that up there just so that, that we can see it uh, as we get started. Um, we're gonna try to move uh, as quickly as possible to respect your time. At the same time, uh, encourage anyone and everyone on the call, if you have questions, let's ask those. Um, we're gonna have presentations by multiple people. We have a PowerPoint that'll help drive us through that that uh, discussion. But uh, if at any point you have questions, slow us down and, and, uh, and let's answer those. Sometimes we can have a tendency because we talk so much internally about these things to move on maybe faster or skip over details that uh, you may desire. So feel free to slow us down. But uh, item number one uh, is consider the approval of the minutes from the School Safety and Security Committee meeting on August 4th. So I would uh, at this time entertain uh, a motion for uh, approval. So moved for Mr. Moore. All right, Scott Moore on the motion. Do I have a second? Gonna need a second. I second it, Dr. Null. Thank you very much, Mr. McCord. Any discussion or corrections or amendments that need to be made to the minutes? All right, at this time, all those in favor, we have a, a hand, or actually, we'll just do a little hands up, uh, but the real, I guess the real determination would be anybody that opposes, please uh, let us hear from you. Okay, hearing no opposition, they'll pass uh, unanimously, thank you. All right, I will get off my screen share here, and Ethan, I'll let you uh, go ahead and share your screen if you would. As we move to item two, uh, receive information about and provide input regarding campus-based digital radio distribution as part of the 2019-2020 School Safety and Security Grant. I believe we have uh, Mr. Steve Meir on the call that's going to help uh, lead this discussion, Mr. Meir. And can everybody see the PowerPoint and not the notes version? Correct. <laughs> uh oh. Steve, you, you've got the uh, the Minnie Mouse voice there. If you can try to log out and log back if possible. Well, let's move on to item two, if, if we can, uh, or item three, I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Foster, if we can move to your item. Certainly. Uh, Mr. Barden, if you'd go ahead and move to the next slide. I'm, I'm just going to kind of give the group an update on where we're at for our district-wide safety and security uh, project and projects uh, throughout the district. We just wrapped up 2020, and you'll see from our plan here on the slide in front of you, we've got a plan for 21, 22, 23, 24. And I'd like to point out that all of those, those are part of the district-wide safety and security contract. We've got one security, co one contractor working through the district uh, for those projects. Uh, but those are projects where we're not currently doing major work in the bond, in the 2019 bond. So all, but all of the major projects, so like Flex School number 20, which is Hope Elementary out in East County, uh, all the elementary schools, the campus renovations projects, our new junior high in Caney Creek, uh, the additions at the high schools, those all also get the safety and security upgrades uh, we're gonna talk to uh, throughout the district. So. The major projects under construction uh, are, are getting the uh, new standard, so to speak. So Mr. Barton, if you advance the slide one. So ideally our, our key scopes of work we're looking at are secure vestibules uh, at the, at the, with impact resistant film. So over the last decade or so, we've been adding secure vestibules for our campuses. We're revisiting uh, some of those to make sure that the, the glass 
that separates reception from the uh, the uh, common area in the in the vestibule is impact resistant uh, to give our our overall uh, staff a better chance to retreat in the event of an incident. Also, we're expanding our electronic access controls uh, for the exterior doors. Uh, that includes the front areas, the front office, uh, and then <clears throat> adding in some locations uh, entry and exit alarms, which is a door monitoring system that'll help us uh, engage or find figure out if there's an unauthorized exit or entry to the building that goes in, in the unsecured areas that are outside or away from the front door. Um, we're also adding first responder radio antenna systems, which uh, is a choice that we made as a district to, to try to roll out throughout the district. Uh, it is required where we're adding square footage to the buildings, but it is something that we are we're doing everywhere. We're touching safety and security. And while we're doing that, as we're also uh, including uh, local antennas uh, for our local digital radios. These are the radios the campus uses to communicate uh, within the building. Uh, they're on a different frequency than what our first responders, which is the EMS, fire, and police use. Uh, so it's two different systems, but we're doing both when we're in, entering our buildings. And uh, along with that, we've got camera and server upgrades for our security surveillance systems, uh, security system upgrades, which is uh, keypads and panels and overall brain that allows our, our central office to communicate with our campuses more effectively. And then fire alarm upgrades. We're upgrading our systems to the required uh, voice evac systems, uh, which just like the first responders radios is an absolute requirement when we expand our buildings uh, and for the new construction, but it is something we've opted to, to handle while we're on the campuses uh, working uh, with these systems above the ceiling as well. So Mr. Barton, if you'd move forward, uh, just to kind of give you a couple of images, not a whole lot of what I've talked about can you actually see, uh, but this is a, a picture of the entry vestibule at Milam Elementary that was done over the summer. And for, for my eyes, I can see the, basically it looks like a nice thick black outline around the glass at each pane. And that's an indicator to me that the, the uh, impact resistant film has been installed there. And then uh, advance one more, Mr. Barton. And then to go with our entry and exit alarm system, uh, each of the campuses we touch now has a monitor in the reception area that's visible to everybody, including the campus staff and the public that might be in there. And you can see from the, the image at Milam, it's up here, uh, the small kind of arrays or arrows outside the building are camera views. Uh, so when a door is unauthorized exit or entry, the camera view pops up on this screen in the, uh, in the reception area so that the the admin is immediately notified and then there's a local alarm on the hallway where the door was uh, unauthorized or where the unauthorized exit or entry happened uh, so that everybody on the campus can be aware and respond accordingly. And unless there's questions, that's my update. Okay, well, thank you, Mr. Foster. Mr. Mayor, we can uh, go back to item two now if you're available. I'm here, thank you, Dr. Nell. Sorry All right, that. thank you, sir. The delay and it, it works great to go off an easy thing because I'm going to be saying some of the same things easy was talking about as we move to the digital campus radios. Part of the reasoning for that was FCC requirements changing and some things with the P25 compliance going back to 911 and radios being interoperable the FCC changing some stuff on us. But what we've opted to do is uh, have the repeaters available on those campuses uh, easy talked about. And that'll give us penetration throughout the building. So if you're in the uh, principal's office at the Woodlands High School, hopefully you'll be able to talk to the band hallway. You'll be able to talk to the people on the track. So you're getting better coverage. Right now we have, in the past, we were putting that as the new construction of the building, but with the grant, we were able to say, let's go back and get everybody a digital radio who does not have one now and a set for their campus. And then in the future, moving forward, we will have the repeaters on site. So we have distributed 1,725 uh, digital radios to campuses, approximately 32 for all campuses K-6 and about 40 to 45 for secondary schools. Some of them already had some, so those numbers are gonna be fluid a little bit, but what that's gonna allow us to do is have five frequencies per campus, get away from the old analog, which we had some issues with because the FCC is taking some of those away to provide Wi-Fi coverage in the areas and give those to Wi-Fi providers. And also we had some interference with uh, local cab companies and such as some of our elementary schools. So this is gonna give us a more secure 
and better coverage around our campuses. That said, uh, we've heard real positive things from the campuses as they've got those radios out. They're very pleased with them. As part of the grant, we're going to go ahead and put in 15 repeaters at, so we have repeaters at all our secondary schools and our K-6 buildings and our two-story intermediate schools. Uh, so those are moving forward right now. We just got the uh, the work orders completed to do roof penetrations to put those antennas out there and they'll be available for easy guys when they go out and do what he talked about with distributed antenna and the first responders they'll be able to use that same uh, roof penetration there so we're going to save some money down the road with what we're doing in the future and work we work real closely with easy and marshall on that great okay any questions for mr mayor about the radios any feedback All right, thank you, Steve, appreciate that. Now, if we uh, would go back to, you know, the December 2019 um, safety and security meeting, we the, the first couple of topics are topics we definitely would have talked about uh, as far as hardening our buildings and, and those type of things, but I don't know that any of us would have anticipated um, that the most pressing safety issue in our buildings would have been a global pandemic. And we would have spent nearly as much time talking about it as we have, but but that is, it is what it is, um, that it is our most pressing um, issue today. All those other things are, still remain and they're, they're still very important, but the largest threat to our ability to have school uh, today is what closed our schools back in the spring is COVID-19. And uh, it's been certainly a well-coordinated effort on all levels of our organization to uh, allow us to do this as well as we've done it. Uh, but that leadership really starts with Barbara Robertson, our coordinator of health services. So I uh, will now go to Barbara for an update on um, how we are responding to COVID-19. Thank you, Dr. Noll. Our campuses and facilities continue to implement strong mitigation strategies to prevent the spread of COVID-19. We started implementing those back in the spring and, and they just flowed right on into our school year. Most of you have been watching the numbers on our dashboard go up. But the rise in positive cases is a reflection of the spread in our communities, not within our facilities. So we continue to only see minimal spread within our buildings, with the most common scenario being like a shared office space combined with a lapse of masking and distancing. So we continue to remind our campuses to communicate our expectations to students and to staff and families regarding consistent mass usage, distancing, hand hygiene, and limiting gatherings. Our campuses have done an amazing job and they have found um, innovative and fun ways to connect and interact with their students and their staff and even their, their communities, all while keeping safety at the forefront. Our campuses and our health services nurses continue to do an outstanding job at contact tracing to identify those who may have been exposed to a positive case. Our technology department has developed effective programs to assist and streamline this process from identifying individuals to sending notifications. Um, it's a total team effort from human resources, technology and health services. We've implemented the new CDC guidelines on the options to shorten the quarantine period for close contacts of a positive case. Those came out just last week from the CDC. So the new guidelines allow an individual who has not had any symptoms uh, to test on day seven of the 14 day quarantine period. They're able to come back to school or to work if they receive a negative test, they remain symptom free and they wear a mask at all times except eating and drinking. There is an option to come back early for those that don't wanna test. They can return at 10 days as long as they have not developed symptoms. They can wear a mask at all times except eating and drinking. For those that are unable to wear a mask, and we do have um, some special population that have medical exemptions that they are just not able to wear a mask, either physically or some other um, disability, and they may return after the 14 day uh, full quarantine time is over. These guidelines became effective um, last Friday on the 4th, and we um, are doing implementing those new guidelines for every new case. And we're reviewing our existing cases on an individual uh, basis. If, if an employee or a, a parent calls and says, you know, can my child come back early? Then we are working through those as a case by case um, basis. We welcome these changes to facilitate getting our students and our employees back to, to school and to work as, as safely and as soon as we possibly can. We anticipate 
that these shortened quarantine timelines will be widely utilized. If anything is um, like the last four days of people calling of how can I come back, then I believe that we will be across the board utilizing these because our mitigation strategies are already well entrenched. Our masking requirements, um, hand hygiene, the distancing all goes into how this shortened quarantine can work for us. Um, technology has added some information, um, data tracking to our absence app so that we can track if this new strategy is helpful to us or are we seeing those that are coming back on that shortened quarantine then developing symptoms and testing positive between that day seven and, and day 14. So we will be able to give the county some data on if is this effective for us or not. Our district has opted into the K-12 COVID-19 testing program from the state and we're currently developing a testing plan for asymptomatic employees. This would probably in, entail testing our employees out of quarantine at that day seven or later. And we also may be extending this to symptomatic employees. I think that Mr. McCord is gonna give a brief update on this in, um, in his section. So we continue to closely monitor COVID-19 in our county and in, in our state and in our schools so that we can continue to make our schools and facilities a safe place for our students and for our staff. We're extremely proud of the hard work that our staff and our students and our families have done together um, to keep open. That was our whole goal when we opened, that we were not gonna open just to close again. We were gonna open to stay open and we really have been successful at that. Here we are just a week and a half out of finishing our first semester and, um, and we've done an outstanding job. Does anybody have any questions I can answer? I just wanna commend Barbara once again and, and all of our nurses, um, the work that they are doing. And certainly you can, you can name off department after department in the school district that we would not um, be able to achieve what we're doing without them. Um, and, and some are, are obvious like the nurses, I mean, it's very clear the, the work that they do, but then there are those groups that work behind the scenes um, that you may never see or think about. And you heard Barbara mention technology. Um, you know, some of the systems that they have built for us allow us to function where other school district districts are struggling to um, keep track of what's going on. We have the capability in the district to build systems internally um, that just help us be efficient and effective. And, um, and so we, we thank technology. Certainly you, you see the custodial groups that are keeping our buildings clean. And then just the work of all campus staff on a daily basis, teachers, uh, and everybody involved on the campus that that are following the protocols because we could do everything else right without people in the buildings following these protocols every day we would not we would not be able to continue to function we would be closed very quickly so um, there's just so many people that deserve credit for uh, how it's going so thank you barbara and your team and i know uh, i believe mr mccord did you want to share as well uh, just a couple things uh I have some facts to start off. Uh, before COVID-19, I would probably have des described these as fun facts. I don't know if I can use the word fun to describe them, but they are facts. Just uh, I get a lot of questions and this would be a great forum to go over it. Uh, first off, a mask. So we've been able to distribute to campuses approximately uh, 180,000 types of mask, different iterations of mask. Just today, our uh, Purchasing team went to region six and we brought back uh, 89,400 more masks just to bolster our supply. So uh, we're happy about the PPE we're able to provide there. Gloves, last count was 248,400. Face shields, 7,300. 480 non-contact thermometers, 1,910 sneeze barriers of different varieties. Uh, this is always popular for every desk in the district, but 27,408 bottles of desk-based hand sanitizer and 8,484 bottles are actually gallons of advanced hand sanitizer. And uh, we became nimble a, a while back and we've uh, allotted funds for individual schools to be able to, to assess boots on the ground, what they need for PPE and they're using those funds. The, the figures I gave you did not include what they purchased, but to allow them to uh, assess what they need in a side-based manner. And it's been very effective so far. So we're excited about that. 
just to a few things about the uh, testing facility. We're getting it lined up and ready to go. We're excited about it. It'll give us a, a presence that we can control a little bit of the testing from, uh, from our district perspective. Cannot say enough positive things about the Montgomery County Hospital District. Just fantastic. And I appreciate all they've done. But we're looking to start up in January and it will be for all employees of Conroe ISD. Uh, you will sign up online through the SSO. Kudos to Terry McClarity, Robert Davidson, and the technology team for what their programming is doing. It's going to be uh, very impressive and really help facilitate the line moving quickly and more importantly, safely for everyone. So very excited about that. The test we'll be using is the Binax Now Rapid Test. You get results in around 15 minutes. It's extremely accurate. And uh, we have over 12,000 of those tests ready to go in the South County Warehouse right now as I speak. But really the testing, we've been planning this for some time, but it's even more valuable now with the changing rules on uh, quarantine. So this is gonna give us an opportunity to get people back quickly and uh, just allow us to be nimble as I said earlier. And we're looking at that for, uh, early January at CISD Police Headquarters. So that's what I have, Dr. Nolan, any questions? All right, thank you, Mr. McCord. Any questions for either Barbara or Chris? Okay, we're moving on, we'll move to item five. Receive information about and provide input regarding the installation of the blue emergency call stations, Mr. Martin. And as we've talked about before, this is what those call stations look like and we use the grant funds to purchase these. And so there's 18 of them total. Um, as of right now, the whole process is to the point now where we wait till December the 14th, which, which is when they will be going out to each individual site that we determined needed one of these um, for the 18 that we had allotted. And they will start installing them the week of December the 14th. We should be finished with them that Thursday. Um, that includes an upgrade, actually, of this one that's right here. They're going to take this one and the one that's at Wood, For Wood Forest Bank Stadium and make it just like the ones that we've purchased there. So um, as far as from the previous meeting, that's an update on that. That will be coming to a close um, next to the end of next week, and they'll all be up and functioning and um, communicating with our police department as necessary or as needed. Does anybody have any questions about the blue emergency phones? Okay, well, we'll move on then to item six, receive information about and provide input regarding the upgrade of the Raptor visitor management system. And this is another one that is um, a good thing. And like you had said before, um, it seems like everything that we've talked about has one main key to it and it's our technology department. Um, and this is another one um, where um, with their help and, and making sure that once we got these funds and purchased this new software that ultimately it's a good thing we had the grant funds because they weren't going to support the old software so we were going to have to upgrade it regardless but the use of the grant funds saved us um, a nice amount of money in order to do that but technology has been key and going out and making sure that each individual campus has a new software and then ultimately any new working hardware that we did purchase they've swapped out or added um, as needed. And they will be finished with that throughout the entire district before we um, leave for the break. So that's that's great. Okay, any, any questions about Raptor? All right, hearing none, we'll move on then. Item seven, receive information about the 2020 multi-hazard emergency operations plan refresh. Yes, and we did the refresh that everybody went over and we've um, since with the whole um, coordinated effort implemented that throughout our campuses as well. We moved away from an online version where we housed it before that was actually we had to pay for. Whereas again, our wonderful technology department created an in-house version of this that we now use that um, the administrators have access to where they are uploading these plans into um, their campus specific plans that are in coordination with that district plan and everything is going fine there. Um, no bad feedback, actually more positive feedback than the, the, the previous program that we were paying for. So that's a good thing. And again, kudos to our technology department, but that, that process is working well and, and saving us a significant amount of, money, amount of money yearly as well. And then if there's any other questions with the 
multi-hazards operation plans, definitely um, let myself know, because I know that's one of the big tasks of this committee is making sure that um, they provide input in regard to those um, emergency operation plans that we use for the district, and not only that with our campuses individually. Okay, any questions or comments? All right, Mr. Martin, I think, was that your last item, correct? The last item is just any other input. Okay. Okay, well, hearing none, I will congratulate you all on a very effective and efficient meeting. And I appreciate you joining us today. And uh, I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, sir. All right, have a great afternoon, everyone. Thank you.